No intro, let's go. I'll be making an atlas beetle today, and as you can see, I've already started. So first things first, take some tinfoil from your mom's kitchen and make the general shape of the thing. I pondered making it to size, but that would take a little bit too much measuring and I'm not a math major. So I'll just be eyeballing it, which is fine because I have the reference photo up anyway, which I highly recommend doing if you're going to do something like this. But that being said, I will completely forget about the reference photos. Like, don't even, <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. But since we made the tail the tin foil base just start pills where you dough boy in the clay like make it pliable make it soft luscious whatever and from there just like have your utensils ready on the go but speaking of utensils i never said i was good at this like you see me using a marker we both see me using a marker and the crazy thing is i bought clay utensils i haven't made anything out of clay since i was a literal child but anyways we're not gonna draw on that but whatever, so you take the clay that you foreplayed, you cover it with tin foil, or you cover the tin foil with it, and then you use your little brother's safety scissors to just lesbian off the excess. And then from there, just like follow your heart with the tools, honestly. Because you can see me following my heart. I don't even know which tool is really for what, but it's it's whatever, it's whatever. I use literally everything on my brother's craft table that I could find. So yeah, I'm using a pencil crayon. At one point I use a glue stick, like See, there it is. Honestly, don't meds what you're doing too hard. You can tell I obviously didn't meds what I was doing too hard. Um, but here we are. And so for the headpiece, just repeat the process of not so gently softening the clay. And from there, you just keep it moving. Because as I said, I forgot about the reference photo. So <laughs> some parts might not match up, but I think I did well. So it's okay. And I actually didn't end up liking the head shape. So I started over, and which is fine. You know, you make mistakes, it's whatever. You gotta do what you gotta do. One thing we're not going to do though is waste the clay because we can get rid of the tin foil, but there is no way we're wasting the clay. See, no way we're wasting the clay. I use Sculpey clay for this. And the rest of the video though was sponsored by Walmart. I couldn't find Sculpey at Walmart, but the rest of it was uh, sponsored by Walmart. Because honestly, Michaels, no offense, but you can miss me. Let's be real here. If I can get the same thing at Walmart for a lesser price, by the way, not sponsored. It would be cool if I was sponsored for my first video. And Walmart, if you wanted to sponsor me for my first video, I think I can make you feel really special. But that's just me, you know? Anyways, but as I said, if I can get it for cheap, I'm gonna get it for cheap. And I got basically everything in this video for cheap. But I will put the objects I used in the description, which I got them from Walmart. 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 Anyways, let's forget. So back to the beetle. Things are looking pretty good right now, I think. I'm making the mandibles right now, which the Alice beetle has three of. The Alice beetle has three of these. And I tried that hatch and stick method for the mandibles, but it was not finna fly. I guess they were too heavy. So I'm going to take the wire and make them as strong as the namesake. You know, funny thing about the Alice Beetle is that they are so aggressive. They are like those YouTubers who go on and on about being an alpha male when really they're just like total dicks all the time, <laughs> if you ask me. They're the douchey, they're the douches of the Beetle Kingdom. But hey, that's neither here nor there. But to me, at least, they make up for it with their cute little weird as fuck little faces. Which, I'll get to that in a sec. But a lot of bugs are aggressive, especially if you're big and strong and pretty and trying to prove to your dad that you're worthy of his love. But when it comes to the Alice Beetle, even their larvae are big and aggressive. Like, if you look that shit up, they, they're they huge. But anyways, you could argue that the larvae are more aggressive than the grown thing. And they literally go through a rebellious stage, if you ask me. Like, it's advised that you shouldn't even pick them up, because they will bite and attack you. And can you even imagine that? Like, like close your eyes and imagine that. Like, that's like getting your shit rocked by a baby. Anyways. So, I'm working on the mandibles, and it took me a ridiculous amount of time, because I tried to get them level or as even as I could, really. Don't let your expectations of me get too high, but I'm just relaying my experience. And that led to me making a fatal mistake because you see that middle one right there i had to maneuver around the other two just to get that one made 
which is so so nerve-wracking so so nerve-wracking and i don't know if you guys actually make these shits at home when you're watching craft channels or if you just roger ebert it like i do but on the off chance you actually do make sure you make the middle part first because the finger acrobatics that i was doing at 2 a.m to try and get this shit to look okay was just a little ridiculous so back to alice beetle behavior they are not team players in the Sidious. Like, Sherry is not caring to them. They don't give a fuck about you. And if you adopt one, you really have to only adopt one. Because they will try to fuck around with the other males if they come near. Like, they will fuck their shit up. Which, I mean, which is fine. Like, it's not fine, but it's fine. That's typical behavior for a lot of species in general. Not just bugs, where you can't have two males together in the same vicinity. The thing that gets me is that you can't even put them in the same enclosure with another female either. Cause they will literally adopt light skin behavior and they will try to fuck so much and so often that the female literally gets stressed out and just like curls up and, and dies basically i don't even know if it's like an unconscious thing where they just get so stressed out that they die or if it's a conscious thing where they just get so stressed out that they try to kill themselves but i don't know to me it's kind of funny <laughs> Like, I don't even blame them. Like, imagine it. Like, you're in a box with a freak who is constantly trying to spit game. And whether or not it even works, they want to go straight to fucking. Like, I don't know about you guys, but if it was me, I'd try to kill myself too. But anyways, I digress. We made it back to the cute little creepy faces. Which, to me, it's just, it's just so interesting. Because, like, I don't know. It's just... It's, it's, okay. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a redeeming quality of, that they have to me. Cause I mean, a lot of things have faces where, you know, like for example, an ant, you look at it and you can tell the general space of where the eyes are. You kind of have an idea of like how the mouth area works. But like the thing about Atlas beetles is they have actual little fucking faces. They have little faces and they're just so their faces are square and their eyes are so big and you see like look i'm making the eyes there they're fucking huge they have just weird little fuck faces and i, don't, I just think that's adorable and i'm really rocking with fuck face here because he has a face and it's a little uncanny valley if you've never seen something like that before i get that but i don't know this is pretty fucking sick but moving on they made a little surface scene because he's a beetle so he needs an opening for his wings and Alice beetles aren't into aviation like that I guess because they're so heavy and bulky but you know put them in the oven and I take them out of the oven and you see the little things popped off they're like mouth sensors or whatever but they popped off and I'm just gonna save it aside till later. Oh, that's where the thing popped off, by the way, that little area. But anyways, so I'm going to sand it and I'm going to sand for exactly five seconds before I decide that I'm literally never going to sand anything again. So next I'm going to use the screwy tool to take the thing virginity about six or so times so, you know, we can make the light holes, which is super easy. It takes no real upper body strength, which is good because I don't have any, but the clay isn't as strong as the beetle itself, which fun fact can hold a hundred times its body weight, making it the strongest living thing in size in, on Earth relative to body size, which is cool. It's kind of like the Hercules beetle, but if you're part of the Haikyuu fandom, you already knew that. So now we're taking the wires and we're bending them in a way that looks reasonable and then just <clears throat> them boys in there, you know, just, you know, and from there I think it's starting to look pretty good if you ask me. He's just taking it. He's taking it really well, huh? But anyways, I know when you're looking at the nail marks and stuff and you're thinking, wow Sydney, maybe you really shouldn't have given up on the sandpaper game so early. And I the reason is I bought sandpaper that was way too fine, even though I knew I should have bought rougher sandpaper and done it from rough to fine grit, which is how you're just supposed to sand things, but whatever. But I did it. So anyways, I use hot glue to make the legs and I could have used more clay but this just made more sense to me because as you can see I had this ingenious tactic to pull the glue and then just snippy snippy and then boom, you have the little the little claw things so you just do this stick it in six more times and you're in business 
And not to flick my own bean right here or anything, but I think it looks pretty good so far, especially for like a novice. And so really, I think anyone can do anything. And if you have something you want to try, just try it because you never know, it might just come together. Like it literally is coming together right now. <laughs> but okay, now we're at the part where the Walmart paint gets to shine. And I know you elitists are going to be like, oh, but Cine, I know it's more expensive, but the paints will be higher quality and you use less paints for thicker coats in the long run. But I, I don't care. You're right. You're right. You're not wrong. But anyways, I use three coats of this black paint. I use my mom's tweezers to gently attach the sensor things. And from there, it's a pretty basic paint job. Um, just make sure to get in all the little crevices, all the dusty corners, all the legs. You're not dumb. I'm sure you can figure this out. It's I'm not explaining paint to you. But what is cool is that I got this cool little glitter glaze, which is the only thing I'm showing the brand for in the video, which should tell you how excited I was to use it. So yes, they sell it at Michael's, but no, I got it at Walmart. <laughs> so, but actually feel free to clown me if the difference is actually like something stupid, like 50 cents. But after two coats of that, use three coats of the Sculpey Glaze, which I got at Walmart. And you know, it goes with Sculpey Clay. That's the only reason I chose it. Just keeping, keeping the family together. And then just wait 30 minutes in between layers. And then after that, you should be good to go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate this so much. I hope my voice wasn't too annoying. And this is my very first YouTube video ever. So please don't be too harsh with any technical things that were off or weird. But I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you guys had just as much fun watching this. And I will see you next time. Thank you.